Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Of all the people I've met in the reptile world, the folks over at Prehistoric Pets were one of the first to welcome me in with open, loving arms. I've gotten to interview Jay, I've gotten to interview Tim, naturally next in line was Laura, Jay's daughter. Laura is one of the people that grew up right alongside as the reptile industry became what it is today. I thought it would be interesting for you guys to get to hear her take on things. It seems that the real gold of these interviews tends to make its way into the blooper section though, so make sure to stick around for those. You're watching Triple B TV. talk about uh, you okay. <laughs> if that's all right yeah I mean obviously you were born into yes. snakes yeah I was just talking with JT as we were driving over he was talking about the Florida shows and like as a little kid that was the only vacation we got is we packed all of us in the car with like a hundred reptiles and a trailer and cages like the same booth he does here 20 years ago and we would drive straight from California to Florida you do the show it was really cool it was before the internet so you got to see snakes for the first time. It wasn't like, oh, I saw that on the internet, I'm going to see it in person. It's the only time you got to see these things in real life. And it was everybody, I mean, everyone who started the industry. And it was just really fun. I, mean, I remember hanging out with all these people's kids and just growing up around that. And it's sort of special. You take it for granted a little bit because I went, oh, world's first snake, not a big deal. Like, that was yesterday, right? You're going to do that again? But. It's still, if I step back and look at it, it's something pretty special. From my perspective, you are the glue that holds the shop together. <laughs> it needs some glue, yes. There's a lot of moving pieces that need some glue. And I always joke that my only job is like make sure the place doesn't burn down and people have a good time. Uh, so if I can keep it from burning down, usually the good time's easy. Those are two of the most important things, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, and the place is still standing and people are having a good time. I mean, that's a success. Yeah, because my dad has the big, dreams, but he has so many of them that it's hard to implement them all. So I try and make those big things happen in real life. And so sometimes that's a lot of little minutia stuff so that he can move on to that next thing. So what, we, I know you guys do a bunch of educational shows, of course. Mm -hmm. so do you you go out and do a bunch of those yourself? I don't or? do as many because I'm making sure that people show up to the parties, but every once in a while somebody's sick and I'm on my way out. And it's fun. It's such a good reminder of why we do what we do. Because you, when you get into like, oh, they were five minutes late, they were five minutes late, it's so far away or whatever, you forget like what we're doing is so unique and cool. Like these kids are having a birthday party, but they're learning about different continents, they're learning about different animals, they're le learning about different habitats and camouflage. And it's like what they should be learning in science class, but they're not paying attention then. But I can't get them off of these animals when we put them in their hands. And so that was all born out of my dad not doing well in school. But when he did hands-on things like wood shop or animals, he knows more than a lot of scientists because he's so focused in on it. And so we teach our customers like that, but we also teach our employees like that. I don't have a handbook like, here's everything you need to know about reptiles. I'm not gonna find that at Prehistoric. It's gonna be, we're gonna throw you in there, let you like doggy paddle for a little bit, and then we're gonna show you, oh, okay, this is how we do it. This is a little bit of why we do it, but we're gonna do it hands-on so they learn it. And that's worked really well for us. I think that's sets us apart from other places. When I got, remember when I got that snake, I got that uh, phantom sunfire. Mm -hmm. And I, I went there, I couldn't, nobody was around. I, I think Jay had a show. I can't remember what the problem was, the, yeah. The, the, the main problem was some, nobody was there that was there the day before. I said, I'm gonna get the snake, we put it away. Uh -huh. And then I came back, nobody, find it no, in the, the, the people that were there weren't there the day before. <laughs> and they didn't know where the snake was. And we did find it, of course. We yeah. did, but, but well, actually, after I left, I was like, okay, well, we'll just we'll fought, wait for those guys to get it back. I had to go wherever I had to go. I had to go to my wife's grandma's house mm -hmm. and go hang out with the family and stuff. And then. You, out of the kind of start, drove to Long Beach and to, to my wife's grandmother's house. And we had a pool party. And we it had a pool party. It was the best. You were so sweet. And that was like something that when we first met you, it was just sort of like this instant connection of like, this is a really nice person who really likes what he does and works hard at taking care of people through it. And that's what we hope we can do, which we don't always get to do those personal connections, but when we can, we really try to and we hope that if people know who we are, they understand that. 
and all the other stuff sort of fades away when you realize like I actually care about you the person I want to take care of you uh, and if I can take care of you through matching up with a great animal that's what I want to yeah. do so that's for me like I love the animals don't get me wrong I've grown up with them they're great but the personal connections are what I really enjoy and what keeps coming back each day is those kids touching an animal for the first time. When like the Lacey Act happened, I was going through a really tough time. If it was not that, I would have would have not been at work for a month. But it could have been the last time they were ever going to be able to get a, a, like a retick. And people, they do their research. That's what I learned through that is they really do the research. They're like, I've been waiting six months to get this. I've been building the cage. I've been making sure I have all the information. And now I have two weeks to be able to get this animal and I may never again, because I live in Wisconsin or something. To me, that was such a, it was a very difficult time because it was such a crunch and it was very painful that like, oh gosh, after this, we may not have a business, but that I was able to like, okay, hey, John, and you were able to make these connections like, I'm gonna get you that snake that you need, we're gonna make sure it's really good and that you get, are able to have it in the future. I'll get you a pair so that you can breed them so that that Wisconsin's gonna have its animals. Um, and so that was really cool. I'm not like a super salesperson, but for if I can think about it, and like these people are gonna take care of these animals for 10 years or 20 years, and that's the nice part about the retail store, is I have customers who've been literally coming to me for 20 years feeding the same ball python they bought from us when I was like eight years old <laughs> crawling around on the floor, and they come every single week to do that. And you can't help but form a bond. And you're like, how's, sure. how's Johnny doing the ball python? And they're like, he's doing great, he's still going around, and that's, it's cool. You don't get that in, in other industries, so that's, that's nice. That's awesome. Are you going to be stay pretty strong? I mean, it's a family business. I can only imagine. It's got to be something else. Question. Are you going to stay there? <laughs> and are you going to take over? I mean, I, I, I can't imagine that. Are you going to take over, you think? I mean, I don't know. So my degree technically isn't in reptiles. It's not in all that. I have a degree in graphic design. I love that. But like I said, I love the people. And the people I love the most are my family. And so um, the Reptile Zoo has really been my baby on really transitioning something that it's more sustainable for us and is more what I find super valuable about is personal connections. And so we're so close to having the zoo, like almost to where we've wanted it for eight years. And so when that's done, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself because it's been every day has been like a, this battle on, okay, how do we get to the next step, next step? And we can't expand anymore. We fit those capacities. I mean, of course, we're prehistoric. We have Jay, so we have plans for another location and something crazy. For the last about a year and a half, I've really taken a lot more ownership in it. Any job, you're like, oh, this is exhausting. I work too much. I don't get enough thanks. And at some point I realized like, I'm in charge. If I'm exhausted or I don't like what's going on, that's my fault. I don't have anyone else to blame, so I should probably fix that. And so I just really took ownership on, on the areas and like, okay, I can make these decisions. I don't need to run them through somebody. I'm just gonna take care of it, do what I think is best, and if it's wrong, I'll get in trouble from the big guy later. <laughs> but most of the time, I mean, I've, it's not like I'm brand new to it. I've seen the, how this works. I've very truly worked every single area of the company. So as a 12 year old, I was clicking the registers. As 10, I was entering the data into the computers and I've done the parties, I've done the sales now, like I've done all the little areas. So I have insight into what it takes to do those things well. And I really try and make sure that the team understands that like, I will stand right next to you and do the job as hard or harder than you. So when I say that it needs to get done in like this window, I. It can, and I'm gonna do it alongside you. And so I really want them to feel like I'm there along with them. Lead by example. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, we, it's hard stuff and maybe they may not know how to do it, but I want them to know that it's possible and that we wanna encourage them to grow through that because everybody needs a little bit of a push. This is a lot of animals to take care of every day. Yeah. Like, we don't, like, days off are not a thing with animals. You know that. How many animals do you have in your collection now? Uh, a lot, right? 50. Right. Somewhere. You stopped counting at some certain number. <laughs> we stopped counting a long time ago. But all those, I mean, I treat my team like they're my kids, which, sorry, guys, you're not my kids, but I treat you like kids. Like, I truly care what's going on with them. The animals, too, they're, like, things that are my responsibility. I've brought them into captivity. I've housed them in an environment. I have to make sure that they have their food, they have their water. Um, I can't just not feel like going to work one day and those things don't get done. Like, 
at the end of the day, if they're not well taken care of, that's on me and I don't, that's not what I want. And there's no reason to have the customers if I'm not taking care of the animals. You, they have to go together. Right. And it's hard to have an employee who's good at both things. You know, a lot of reptile people are all animal people. Or, 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 yeah, they're all animal yeah. and no people are all people right. and people and no, no animal. No people, <laughs> lot, lots of like, woo, and not like the day-to-day -day right. right. grubby, scrubbing tables. Not like everybody comes and like, I'll scrub all the snake poop you want. Like, that's not the only job we do. Like, we clean tables and we are nice to customers when we don't feel like it. Like, <laughs> we have to do all of those things right. to, to make it happen for us. No doubt. Well, I think you're doing a great job. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work, but I'm very thankful to have it. And it, it's cool to be growing up in it and to have seen all these people like random strangers. Well, they're not strangers, but they feel like strangers to me because they'll come and be like, I changed your diaper when you were a little kid. And you're like, <laughs> and your name is? Hi. Like, nice to meet you. Like, I remember when you rolled around on the floor and you're like, this is really strange. I'm sure this is fine, but hi. I don't remember because the connections change throughout the years, but it's cool to be a little bit older and to be able to form those bonds again and to sort of connect with the next generation of reptile keepers who have grown up at the same time as I have and have learned from that and have had some extra things they want to do. I mean, when we started, there weren't UV bulbs. Like, right. there wasn't such thing. There wasn't a reptile industry. So where it is now and the technologies that they're and the education and the species that are available. I mean, there were wild species back there too, but the species that are available that are captive born and people are really working those unique projects on is, I think, where it's going. And that's exciting to me. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming on Talking Explorers. Of talk course, yeah. Thank you. Love you, Ryan. <laughs> yes, good stuff. If this is the first time watching reptile-related content on YouTube, then that is probably the only reason you've ever not heard of prehistoric pets. But just in case, the link is in the description. Please leave a comment. Let Laura know what a great job she did. And while you're down there, of course, give that like button a little love if you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't, well, then just step on that like button really hard until it gets the point. Subscribe for more awesome videos every single Monday. Look at all the links in the description to find out how your life can get even better and more entertaining with us in it. Next week, we're going to be talking with John Cashman over at Reptile Avenue, who works with some really cool super dwarf reticulated pythons. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Camera, it was just him. And I did that with Tim. And then after that, I was like, people were like, where the hell are you at, dude? It's your channel. I was like, okay, I'll freaking be in there. It's trying to get crazy on me. Oh my god, I should not have stayed at the bar with those guys last night. Uh oh. We closed the bar down. I got recording here in my life. And today I'm wearing socks. You know, there's lights and there's cameras. We, 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 I try my best to like make us pretend that those aren't there. Yeah. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> it should be you that's sweating, not me. You got a little Thank fluff you. in your hair. Thank you. I think it's coconut. It my looks hair. like shredded coconut. Perfect. <laughs> I just really, you know, I've heard coconut's good for your hair. Gee, Wolikers, folks. Gee, golly gosh. When I lived in Hawaii, there was a long part, part of time where yeah. I, I wake up and I would go find a coconut. Go, go, husky, find, eat, a coconut. go find a coconut. That, yeah. I'd jump in the ocean and swim around, and like that's how I started my day. Probably the happiest, healthiest times of my life. Yeah, I think, it doesn't sound like a bad day. It's not a bad day. It's not no. a bad day. You don't have much to show for it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that coconut. But you got the coconut and you're healthy and you're happy and you're running around. The sun is shining. It's like you're in paradise. Like, yeah. you know, so it's not too bad. But yeah. the point is coconut is, is really good, good for, you. for you. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. My, the worst thing is when I got a guy with a beard. Like oh, a long no, beard. Just... And it's like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh man. Here. It's that bass. I, I didn't know you were going to be that good. <laughs> that good, juice.